Hello everyone. Um, I have a little bit of uh, an unusual instrument to show you and it's particularly unusual in this part of the world, uh, New Zealand, um, although it's relatively common uh, in America and it is this. This is a mellophone. This particular one is in the key of E flat uh, and it is interesting because of its ridiculously, absurdly oversized bell. This thing's bigger than my face. Um, it is just ridiculous. Uh, the instrument itself uh, can be in either E flat or F. This particular one's in the key of E flat, which means it is the same pitch uh, as an E flat tenor horn, as we call them here in New Zealand, or alto horn, as I believe they're called uh, in uh, America. Um, and effectively, I, I think this is designed to take the place of a French horn in a marching band. So if you've got a military band or a marching band, um, and you want that sort of French horn sound, instead of playing the French horn, which uh, most of you will know sort of plays down to your side or uh, sort of projects behind you, this, unlike that, projects straight ahead. Uh, this particular example was made by the F.E. Olds and Son Company. Uh, you may be able to read the inscription along the bell. Um, and it's actually a very solid, good instrument. Um, it was made in about 1975, according to the serial number. The valves are just exquisite. I think, that, um, I think these valves are surprisingly good, given the age of the instrument and given the fact that I wouldn't have expected any manufacturer who actually makes these instruments to take them very seriously, because I certainly don't. Um, there are there are two well, there's one thing two things there are two things uh, that I'm not a huge fan of the one is some of the tuning some of the tuning is a little bit iffy um, I haven't I actually only got this today in the mail so I haven't had the opportunity to get any of the tuning slides working uh, or anything like that they're all a bit stuck um, but that's all right we can we can fix up on we can fix up that but some of the natural tuning of the instrument is is not quite spot on. But of course, when you've got an instrument which has such a disproportionately large bell, you're going to get some tuning issues. You're going to get some projection uh, characteristics that uh, you won't be familiar with unless you've, you've played these sort of instruments. The second thing, and probably the most annoying thing for me, is the position of this uh, pinky ring, the little, the little hook where you put your pinky to play. If I was to put my little finger in there, um, it makes holding the valves a lot more difficult and it sort of wants to shift your hand into a position that uh, isn't ideal for playing so ideally this would want to be up on top of itself um, to be able to provide a decent amount of support but because of the way the lead pipe twists around almost immediately after the valve casing uh, that's not really possible unless you had a much larger thumb ring which is what I would prefer but unfortunately it's not what this instrument has. Um, so as I said, th these are used primarily in, in, uh, in marching bands and so forth. Please tell me if you've got these in your country. I know they're used extensively in the United States. Um, I have never seen one played in a band in New Zealand. Um, they're very uncommon. Um, and it's sort of surprising, therefore, that I got this quite cheap. This was 150 New Zealand dollars, um, which is about couple of thousand US dollars, no I don't know what it translates to in, in other currency, it's about 35 uh, British pence um, and so forth. But anyway, um, um, the idea of this instrument is that it plays mellow, hence the name, the mellow phone. Um, unfortunately the closest it comes to that is uh, mellow puff, it sounds quite a dead sound to me, not particularly enjoyable. I think there are much better versions that of, of brass instruments that sing in this particular pitch, which is E-flat, uh, and they sound much nicer. The E-flat tenor horn, or alto horn as it's called in America, I think is a much better sounding instrument, although the tenor horn projects upwards, this projects straight ahead. But anyway, I'm going to play you a little piece of music. Um, this one is out of uh, Carnival. Um, Eleven solos for cornered and piano arranged by Donald Hunsberger. You know, this one's on page 14. Believe me, if all those endearing young charms, which is about the longest title for a piece of music that you get in the English language.
Here we go. That um, piece is quite straightforward, quite simple, um, and unfortunately I'm having all sorts of troubles with my tuning because I look at a note on the page, I think I know what it's going to sound like, and it sounds a fourth uh, out from where I expect it to be. Anyway, this is a, a video that I've made to talk about this mellophone. If there are any uh, specific questions you've got, me in regard, uh, you've got for me in regards to this, or you want to share some of your own experiences, uh, with this instrument, I invite you all to do so. Uh, a new thing, I have a PO box, a post office box, which means if anyone out there has any music, any weird brass things that they want to send me, uh, please feel free to. Uh, the address is down in the description box. If you send me something particularly interesting, um, and if it's expensive to ship, I will reimburse you for the cost of shipping um, if you get in touch with me ahead of time. Um, uh, I'm not going to pay for everyone's shipping, especially if it's just music or something you're sending me, but if you are sending me something uh, slightly bigger, then I am prepared to cover the cost of that, because I appreciate international shipping can be quite expensive. Anyway, thank you guys very much for watching, and uh, have a nice day.